guess we'll start. PenguinCon 2015, Welcome, Pat Baker, everybody. the Invisible to Penguin Pod, Pod. If you, Internet. If it's your first time, welcome. If it's your, been here before, you know where everything's at. This presentation is on what's called I2P, which is the Internet, the Invisible Internet Project. How many people have ever heard of I2P? Okay, how many people have used it? Ooh, okay. How many people are familiar with Tor? How many have used it? Okay, that's pretty good. Freenet? Well, not the Freenet. Oh. Okay. This is kind of a overall high-end view of it. Of I2P. It's a lot harder to use. I will in a minute to start. If you're unfamiliar with Tor, if you're unfamiliar with Freenet, it may take a little while to get, but we'll get you through it. My name is Pat Baker. Still? Still. <laughs> First thing, little disclaimer. I'm not responsible. Bad people use this. Good people use this. If you find things that you don't like, find things that are illegal, don't come to me. If the people with the three-letter uh, offices come by, knock on your door. Your ISP hates you. If it's illegal, don't do it. Or I don't want to know anything about it. <laughs> and yes, if you have questions, bring them up. So basically, I'm going to history, comparison between other pseudo anonymous systems, i.e., Tor and Freenet. <coughs> some overview, some general settings, and then we have your questions if you want. History. Created in 2003. Uh, in Europe, they were trying to make Freenet a little bit better, more secure, more uh, stronger. Uh, it's a, like a big following in, in Europe. Not so much <coughs> if you go to the sites, they go to the sites, they're called each sites. You'll find a lot of them are European, uh, Russian, uh, German, and French. I'll seem to be the three biggest. The, the place if you want to go to it is uh, HTTPS, get I2P.net. Some of the simple comparisons, whereas Tor and Freenet, they use TCP. Uh, I2P uses a mixture of TCP and UDP-based UD, system. It has a... Uh, which I'll get to a little bit later. It's called SSU uh, controls. They use, well, Tor uses exit nodes. IGP uses what they call out proxies. They're kind of the same thing. Uh, where Tor uses a directory service, when, you go to, when you're going to Tor, you have to go and get a big file from a one single server. Whereas IGP, the network, how everything is configured, you save little chunks of it on your local machine. So it's a little bit. Easier, it's quicker. Uh, they use circuits where it's called tunnels. And the separation, it's basically everybody is a router, everybody is a node on I2P. Quick little over here. It's anonymizing, it's not encryption. It has encryption within it, but if you have something that's not encrypted going in, it's not going to be encrypted going out. It's a decentralized structure, which basically means. If they were to knock down one section of it, the other section, it's kind of like, kind of like the internet. If you have one section of the internet knocked down, it'll route around the problem. Uh, it's built for multiple, it's built to basically have, when you get into the system, you stay in the system. You stay in the, uh, you stay in the network system. It has emails, torrents, web browsing, IM1. It's nice because it's a lot faster than torrents. You can stream through it. If you want to use BitTorrent on it, you can do that. If you want to host uh, files on it, you can, and they're pretty quick. And it fits. TCP UDP based. It was a design for its own you state in the system itself. It's called Eep Sites. That's like the website is called the Deep Site. I, I'll get to that a little bit later today. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show it because unfortunately they don't use uh, the connector that I have for my machine, so I'm going to have to muddle through it. Because it's anonymous. And so much attempt. It's designed to host. It's, like it's designed to host its own sites in the cloud itself. You don't have to go out. You can, but it's really designed to have everything internally. Works Linux, OS 10, Windows, Android. Source code. It works on Pi. So if you have a Raspberry Pi, you can set up a router. You set up a little node for it. So you like said, look at whatever your OS is at that site. It'll tell you how to do it. The nice thing about it is you don't have to run as root. You run as a regular user. So the security of your user is there. Again, I2P is root. This started at simple. I2P router start. I2P, st I2P router stop. Real quick, it is simple. And 
And these are terms you probably, people who've been there before have probably ran across this, garlic, which is the tour type setup. <clears throat> HP node, tunnel gateway endpoint. Tunnel is just that, it's a tunnel, in and out. Nice thing about tunnels is, tunnels are designed to go two ways, out or in. You have one set of tunnels that send stuff out, one set of tunnels that send stuff back. Gateway, just that, like endpoint. NetDB is actually the, like I said, the database that stores other sites out there and the EU sites. Garlic routing is similar to Onion, so if people have used Tor, it's designed kind of the same way, late encryption. Uh, it actually bundles multiple messages packets together into larger packets. So you may be sending one packet, but you may be having two or three other packets within that. So that kind of disperses, and it adds anonymity, it adds little speed as well. Uh, they use the WML ESF. If you're interested in more encryption, if you go to their website itself, it has probably the best documentation on it I've ever seen. Step by step, it's very good. I would recommend going there. Yeah? You said bundles packages. Bundles, bundles packets. No, no, packets. Small little, your, your data packets. Yeah. Bundles them together. Okay, but all from your machine? No, from multiple machines. You're, you're yeah, actually carrying... You have to wait on them. No, not, not that, because it's really tiny little packets. I can show you as we get a little farther out. Okay. It, it works pretty well. It's, it's, I would, I would, I'm thinking you too. If I've got one, one packet with another packet, I have to split it off, but it, it's pretty good at what it does. Again, tunnels, one-way networks. You go, like, this, go, this group of people would only be able to talk in this direction, and that group of people may be able to talk in this direction. You have two sets of tunnels for each person. That's way another way to explain it. Uh, think about it is, well, yeah, you're kind of the best way to think about it. Uh, gateway is, like I said, whenever you send something, when it's starting and ending, it goes to what they call a gateway. This you don't have to worry about what to set it up. It's just if you want to dive deeper in it, it talks about it. Then endpoints are just that. It's if you think of Tor and its exit nodes, that's kind of what an endpoint is. But an endpoint could be for a for going into a tunnel or coming out of a tunnel. And then the node database, it has router you know, route information and lease information. Basically, what it says: route information is from one node to the next node. Lease information is where the each site is located so it knows how to route it through. A little bit better explanation. A good old Alice and Bob. If you notice what sends at each one, this would be like an out tunnel, this would be an in tunnel. Certain machines can have both in tunnels and out tunnels. A little bit better description. If you, you have when you start the application, it would connect to somebody else, to somebody else, that would be considered your inbound, so it's always sending information, I'm sorry, it would be considered outbound, so it's sending it out. And then once it finishes and connects to somebody wanting to, to know where the endpoint is, that would be its inbound tunnel. Uh, this is kind of what it is. Each one of these little bits is consider it a, a packet of inner packets within it. So everybody's routing everybody else's traffic. I, I think you need to think about it as a, um, oh, what was the other one? Uh, like a mesh network where everybody's kind of using everybody else's traffic. So if you were to, somebody would attack one little, one node and say this was a bad person, they would only be able to get, if they could decrypt it, little teeny bits of information. They wouldn't be able to know who it's going for, who it's coming from, or anything like that. During the network, it's very simple. When you first start it up, it has a it goes out to the I2P site to get a basic database, get a starting database, which gives it the information of where it has to go. Then after it gets the information, it just makes a tunnel, similar to Tor. You make your tunnel, you make your next tunnel, you make your next tunnel. Then as you're coming through, you're connected to more people's tunnels. You can actually select how many tunnels you want to go through. If you want to go through two people, you want to go through 10 people, you want to go through 50 people. You have that power to do that, which gives it 
it can slow it down a little bit, but it also makes it a lot more anonymous and a lot more controlling. First thing first, it's going to be slow the first time you set it up. When you run it and install it, once you start it, walk away for maybe half hour, 20 minutes for it to set up its tunnels for you. It's just the way, after the first time you start it and use it for a while, it will get faster as it learns more people. As more databases are merged together, it knows, okay, I know where all these people are, these people know where I am at, it will be faster. Set up your browser. It uses HTTP proxy. You have to set that up manually. And port 4444. And also, to get to its, I'll show you the site in a few moments, it's 7657. You have to set this up, or you can install a, pro a browser. So, like I said, it's a proxy. So, if people are familiar with proxy, that's kind of what you're setting up. Shared bandwidth, you can set it up so that you can use up to 100% of your own network bandwidth. I wouldn't, for obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, usually default works. Default is, I believe, 70% of bandwidth. Works pretty well. You can make it less, make it, make it more. But yeah, it's, uh, I, did, I made a mistake once and did that. It maxed everything out and my wife was not happy. <laughs> so that's the default. When you first start it, this is what it looks like. <clears throat> this is what you get on your router console. It gives you, it actually gives you sites to go to, which is nice because Tor doesn't. You have to find them, and they're pretty good sites. You know, forum sites, um, networks. You'll notice when you first start it, this will give you things like testing and issue. You know, you may get, you'll, you'll have that run. This is actually the connection. When it's connecting out to the site, this is actually. But yeah, um, technical docs are great. Java docs. It has a wiki. You can actually see what your bandwidth is actually being utilized. It's a little bit better version. This right here is. If you're, on the, if you're on a router, or if you're on a uh, home network, more than likely they're filtering your packets, they're filtering your network so you, they don't have all the ports open. It's smart enough to say, wait a minute, you've got a system firewall, I can route around it using UDP. So you, if it says firewall, you're okay, it still works. If it says okay, it means you have an open network and you're, they love you for it, because it makes it a lot quicker. Shared clients, it'll, it tells you that it's, you have people connected to you and it's connecting to other people. This is another screen as you scroll down. Or, this is actually mine, so I've added a few other ones that aren't there, originally there. It's really configurable. So it's really powerful. It's really configurable. You can set things like right here if you want to set up how much of your bandwidth is being used. I would recommend leaving it the way it was. You can set up how much traffic you want to go in and out. Even though it's using like two percent of your bandwidth, or you know whatever percent of your bandwidth, you can actually tell it I want to use more packets going in and out. Which sounds kind of funny, but you can play. I play with this. I've had this at a hundred. I've had this at zero. The defaults leave them like they are. Yeah. That appears to be a web interface. Yes, it's all web interface. Okay. Does it have its own built-in web server? Does you nope. also need to run Apache or Nginx or something? No, no. It's, this is strictly. Uh, it's. You're at, well. You're actually accessing its 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 software, which uses a web interface to itself. So it has its own built-in web web server for its web interface. Yeah. Yeah. You, don't, you don't need to run a patch here. No, no, no. You don't, you don't have to use any. You, you can have just a simple. You just type in the address with the port. What is it developed? So it's running its own web server. What is it developed in? Uh, developed in, I believe, C. C? Right. That's running its own web server. It's another thing nice about it is 
about is you can click on each one of these little settings. It'll it'll tell you how many tunnels, how many people you have coming to you. Unfortunately, I don't have it. I can show you on this one if you want, if you want to come up and look at it. You can define what bandwidth <coughs> network. How many peers, which are people who you connect to, it knows, and people that know about you, it can tell you how many there are. This is where you can tell it how many, what they call hops, which are how many extra other nodes you want to connect to. You know, the more you, sh the more you show, and the more you add on the, in the link, the more people you connect to, obviously the longer it's going to take. So I said, leave, I would leave it at two hops, two hops, one hop. Those are go back to here. Basically, you could have every one of these people being a hop before you even start to find somebody else. So if you're really paranoid, you can add more people. Yeah, is there any kind of um, junk packets? Uh, is there anything that, that keeps it so that, one of the problems I understand with Tor and many of these types of networks is, even if I don't see what you're doing, by seeing the whole network as a whole, uh, you can see a packet of a certain size going in, and then you can see this that, that size packet moving around, and so you can wind up be sent, like, if you have enough information about the network in general, you can, you don't know what they're saying, but I know you talk to him, right? That kind of thing. Yeah, uh, to, is there anything that does additional packets? Tour, what they're actually doing is, if they control enough of the endpoints, mm -hmm. they can then reverse the traffic, uh, and they're not looking at, they're basically picking a hash of a packet, and or they will tag the packet. They're using various network technologies and the headers of the packets and whatnot. And that's what they're doing with Tor. Right. Um, there's there's an LC securely on packet sizes. Though. Right. Um, um kind of sort of. Yeah. But um, I guess is there any additional like junk bandwidth generation in this? The it's problem is is even if you have junk bandwidth, all that's gonna do is bog down the network and it won't actually stop that. In order to stop with that type of de-anonymization, you have to actually increase the amount of exit nodes. This um, right. exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they get around this by having everybody share everybody's traffic. So you're going to have parts of yours. You're going to have parts of his. He's going to have parts of his everywhere. So when you send when you're sending a packet through this network, it's it's actually a grouping of others. So you may see one packet that may go from you to you. But you don't know if it's yours or yours or yours or yours. Does, does the packet then get split up again and recombined with other packets so that yes. it's not okay? That would add yes. enough entropy. Oh yes, that that's why you can set up your number of hops. So if you want to go through six people, yeah. you could have, you know, all these people coming together. It's like think of it as a big highway. You know, a big uh, when you're in a big traffic jam and like that person may be cell phoning that person and that person's maybe calling to that person, but it's one. It looks like one packet, but it's a bunch of packets yeah, inside yeah, of it. Yeah, that's 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 default the default is three hops, right? Default is three hops, which is it works, it works pretty well. It's, it's pretty, now, if you have a lot of bandwidth, I would probably go more. If you really if you're really paranoid, go even more. But like everything else, Tor, Freenet, this, if somebody has enough money, they can spit up enough resources and they can find out who you are. So, yeah. but. The thing about this is it's not really designed to be like Tor where you go from your site to a site. You go from the starting and the site you want to go to is inside the network. It never really has to go out of it. You can. There's a configuration where you can go to a new site and go out, but it's not really designed for that. It's designed to stay in, the, in its cloud. Every site, every... So it's designed to basically um, only really be for a, the ITP version of services. They have a version of Tor and services you, uh, that will connect to Tor through I, I2, or from I2P to Tor through if you want to do that. But as an overall, 
the way the group, the, the way that people decided is was strictly for <laughs> stay within its cloud, within its within its grouping of other people. That's why it has the uh, uh, the hops, the logging, the multiple packets put together. Yeah, like I said, it's uh, <coughs> the hops, the length, you know, set your length, set your length more. Without showing it actually running, it's kind of hard to throw more, th more information about it. That's sadly kind of it. I was, I'd hoped I would be able to show more of it, but anybody have any other outside questions? Any questions? So what would be, if you had to differentiate the I2P from Tor, because that's probably what people are familiar with, what would be on a technical level the differences between them on how it handles the internet traffic? Okay, Tor goes from, what? It does have HDMI. Oh, it does have HDMI? Does, so if you have a cable. I don't have a cable. Anybody have an HDMI cable? No, no long bag. Oh, man. No HDMI cable? Okay. Well, HDMI cable, anybody have one? Uh, I do. How, how quick? I have to go all the way back to the parking garage. Well, we still have what, 20 minutes? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just, just the cable. Um, yeah. Probably yeah, the biggest. HDMI, regular HDMI, right? Not micro, mini. No, just regular HDMI, yeah. Okay. I'll be back um, a new question on the tour. Probably being tour is a circuit based. This is more of a, think of it more, I would say more of a packet based, where Tor, you, it go, you set up your circuit and you run, the packet goes bop, 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 and if somebody gets in the center uh, node, they could be, they would be able to see what that packet is, whereas I2P, they may be, I2P, they may be able to get the center node, but all they see is a little packet. They don't know where that's coming from, other than it may be coming from this side or this side, but it, it actually may be part of a packet from somebody totally else going to someplace else. That's probably the biggest differentiator between the two. Um, so then as I should be actually breaking, like if I was to send um, a packet from my computer to a IGP server, um, does that packet then get, <coughs> set that one packet, does it get separated out into different packets? Yes. And then no, it gets separated out to different packets. Those different packets get bundled into other packets that are routing in the network, and then it gets split out and sent to where you want to go. Okay. So yeah, there there can be an issue where if you have a lot of latency, you you're gonna you're gonna have issues where you can't get the sites. It's like Tor too. It's just it's just the way it is. Uh, but they get around kind of that because they use UDP in a lot of their connections. So the the latency of their multiple handshaking yeah. is not there. Obviously, these EAP sites aren't going to be able to be found with DNS. No. How do you find these EAP sites? When you, set, it's, when you set up an EAP site, it actually puts it into the database, the uh, major database that has all the, outs, all the other sites. And as people, as it finds them, it actually starts merging them together and it will send you the sites. Um, there is a central site you can go to to put your your website or your e site it's, it, it's, it uses like a public key which is 520 characters I think 30 characters you can put it in this website and it will put it into a database and say hey, hey we have sites and it will connect that database will send it to your personal database so that you know where to find it or it can be found so would you use like Raspberry Pi running a web server and then you register that, mm -hmm. and, it, and it also has the I2P yep. installed on it. Yep. And then you'd run a separate instance of I2P on your laptop. Yep. Or you could do that. You could have the instance of I2P on the laptop and your website on the laptop, or your uh, IM server on the laptop, or a uh, uh, BitTorrent uh, streamer on the laptop, or uh, a chat client on the laptop, all at once and people can get to it and vice versa, you can get to it. The longer you have your I2P running, the more, the faster it actually becomes because the more connectors, the more nodes, it recognizes and knows. When you say the longer you have it running, does it have to be continuously running? Or can I turn my machine off, 
and then turn it back on? Or does it have to start over from scratch? Oh, no, no, no. Every time I no. turn my machine no, on? No, when you're, the first time you connect is the longest because it has to go out, go to the I2P site, get a mini little database and say, okay, I know where these, I know these nodes. Then once it connects to those nodes, it says, hey, do you know any other nodes? Then it connects to those nodes, which it turns next to those nodes, the next node. And then it stores that information. And it stores it on a database locally. So you can actually, if your machine dies, you can actually take the database, the actual, it's a directory, copy that directory to your new machine. Everything's the way it was originally. Little, little mini database of like its own seed. Yeah, yeah. So then if, if the government seizes my laptop, they're then going to have this database also. That's unique. Yeah, it, yeah it's, just, it's just people you know. And it may not even be people you've been to. It just may be one or two random people that you've thrown in and people connected to you as well. I know, that, I know to get to, like, you may know where he's located. So you connect to him, which in turn connects to him, and you say, oh, I know where he is, you connect to that. So he may only know one or two people, and he may not know where he is. right now it's on every machine. It may, if you have it on two machines, it can, it, they may, may or may not know each other exists until you actually, by random generating, uh, next to it, but yeah, it has to be, each one is. Well, if, the, if it's running a proxy on one of them, you can't connect to that proxy port across your internal network. Um, Ooh, that's funny.